for mourning on this 104th Anzac Day. As President of Danivirk and Districts RSA, I welcome all local RSA members and also those from Ekitahuna, Paiatur, Woodville, Pongroa and Norswood, as well as the whole community of Tarua, especially those in rural areas. We live in different times and I'm very grateful to Monique Ashford, the Danivirk RSA Secretary, for putting this service together, as well as those who put input into it. Reflecting on this last year, it has brought challenges with the drought and then the virus very much affecting our communities. However, it was our trip to Europe late last year that made me realise how fortunate we are living in a peaceful country with good facilities compared to those in Europe during both World War I and World War II. My uncle was killed in September 1944 in Holland and we attended a very moving weekend, the 75th commemorations. As you drive throughout Holland, Germany and France, you pass the many Commonwealth cemeteries so beautifully kept as they are at Anzac Cove and other places around the world. However, it is the vast size of some that make you realise the terrible cost so many Commonwealth countries paid for our freedom. So many New Zealanders lie in foreign fields, miles away from home, with many of them no more than 20 years old. Remember, they went through five years of many struggles. In this lockdown, we need to remember that the difficulties we are experiencing are minor compared to those which the men and women went through, as well as their families back home. We need to adhere to government's wishes and help one another along the way, however we can. All our RSAs are contactable if you need a device or a chat, and they can be of help to those veterans and families in need. Better times will come because we are a nation of stubborn and resourceful people, and we will be free again. We will be able to attend Anzac Day services as we know them, to remember those who fell, and those with other issues caused by war. Take care, keep safe, and remember those immortal words on so many cenotaphs across the world, lest we forget. Namahi Nui, Kia Kautai Katoa. Anzac Day commemorates all New Zealanders and Australians that served in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. It's hard for my generation and the following generations to even imagine what it was like to go off to war, leave their families and head into the unknown. To fight for the right of future generations to live here in New Zealand with freedom and democracy. On this day, we take the opportunity to remember and pay tribute to those who have served and continue to serve and protect this wonderful country that we live in. Normally today, throughout the Tauru district, we would gather at one of the cenotaphs or many memorials throughout the district to pay our respect and remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice and those that fought to give us the privileges and freedoms that we enjoy today. When our men and women returned, Many memorials were built, and the Tauru district has a wide variety of cenotaphs, memorial halls, memorial gates, and even a special memorial bridge at Kaipororo, each with its own community story. This is because our small rural towns made a significant contribution that was disproportionate to our size. Our men and women were ordinary people doing extraordinary things under incredibly difficult circumstances. It has always made me proud that we continue to hold 11 services throughout the Tauru district and our rural communities that sent so many men and women continue to remember and honour those that served our country. It is heartening to see how many respectful ways our people have shown through the lockdown to demonstrate the significance of Anzac Day to them. It is a day where our defence forces usually join us in our communities and we are grateful that they are so involved in our district, and especially the 1st Battalion, whose charter with us was due to be celebrated in Danivirk later this year, 
and am unsure at this stage if that'll take place with COVID-19. Every year, the 1st Battalion join us for Anzac Day and pop into my office to discuss the services and their assistance. Our charter hangs on the wall in the office and on the cabinets below sits the book with our photographs of the charter, the 1st Battalion yearbook, their badges, their history and a bottle of Grant's Grog, a special port of the 1st Battalion. After the meeting, they spoke about what it meant seeing the charter and their battalion honoured in this way. It demonstrated to them the way we feel about both their service to the Tower District and New Zealand. It had reflected the true essence of our relationship. We may not see them every day, but they are always there when we need them and never forgotten. There are moments in our community when our actions speak louder than our words. As Weber School celebrated their 125th anniversary, they acknowledged their local men and women that had fought to give them their school and their wonderful community by laying a wreath at the cenotaph as part of the ceremony. It heartened me to know that no matter how many years pass, our respect and gratitude remains and we pass this down to our children. Their sacrifice will never be forgotten or the service of those in the forces today. Ekerahuna, as part of its town upgrade, chose to pay tribute and created a place to remember the men and women that served and the great sacrifice made by Ekerahuna and its districts outside their War Memorial Hall. If you haven't seen it after the lockdown and when we're allowed, I encourage you to do so. This lights up at night and the words, lest we forget, are visible for all to see. The sense of pride we feel as we pass the Dannyburg Domain and you can't help but look up at the beautiful cenotaph and take a moment to remember and reflect. Anzac Day is our special day to honour those who served King and Country. It is a time to honour the veterans among us and our community. It is also a day to thank the courageous men and women who serve our country around the world, working to bring other nations the peace and freedom that we enjoy here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. At the same time, we renew our commitment to peace, to protecting and promoting peace in our homes, in our country and around the world. On behalf of the Tauru District, I extend our gratitude to all men and women that serve in the Defence Force. We are extremely proud of you. We're proud of the reputation our Defence Force has here, at home and around the world. We will always remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for us and celebrate those who came home again and rebuilt our country. It was this great sacrifice by those that served that gave us the peace, democracy and the unity that we live with today. Anzac Day is a day when we remember our history, when we think of what it means to be a New Zealander. We will remember them. Kei wari wari tātou, lest we forget. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. For more than 100 years, Kiwis, Aussies and a variety of those from allied countries have attended and participated in ANZAC services held in many parts of the world. This morning we have gathered via the internet to remember and honor those who went to war but did not return. Additionally, this year we are formally acknowledging those currently serving in New Zealand and Australian militaries. This year Anzac Day is different in another way as well. Different because a new enemy has arrived among us and is cutting a swath through the world's population. This enemy is no respecter of age, sex, nationality, ethnicity, or creed. Yet one unkind wag has claimed, you have not been asked to land at Omaha Beach to find and save Private Ryan. No, you have been asked to go home, sit on your couch, and watch Saving Private Ryan. One of the most difficult aspects of war is waiting. Waiting for attack which may not come, but can come at any time and place you least expect. Our, vile, <coughs> our viral enemy strikes as silently and unexpectedly as a sniper's bullet fired in Gallipoli. While all of us are vulnerable to the microscopic invader, 
Some among us have chosen to put themselves at the very tip of the spear, our special forces, if you like. The doctors, nurses, lab technicians, those caring for the elderly and infirm. They are aided by those who logistically support them in the full face of the fight. The police and other first responders, the truckies, those who stock the supermarket shelves, the cleaners, and so many too numerous to name. So this Anzac Day, let us recall not only those who left these shores never to return, but let it be a time when we honor and encourage those currently serving in the military and those risking their health in the battle against the virus. Amen. Our reading taken from John 15, No Greater Love. As the Father loves me, so I love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. And now a prayer, a soldier's prayer that was commonly put in Bibles given to servicemen during World War II. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose grace thy servants are enabled to fight the good fight of faith and ever prove victorious, we humbly beseech thee to inspire us that we may yield our hearts to thine obedience and exercise our wills to thy behalf. Help us to think wisely, to speak rightly, to resolve bravely, to act kindly, to live purely. Bless us in body and in soul, and make us a blessing to our comrades, whether at home or abroad, may we ever seek the extension of thy kingdom. Let the assurance of thy presence save us from sinning, support us in life, and comfort us in death. O Lord, our God, accept this prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love this day and evermore. Amen.
Good morning to you all. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, and acknowledge Rolly Ellis, your current president of the Danny Burke RSA, and an old friend, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all today. Uh, as an honorary member of the Danny Burke RSA, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to do so, although sadly, uh, I'm unable to be with you in person, given the current circumstances. I'd also like to pay tribute to Tom Collier, the past patron of the Danny Burke RSA, who sadly passed away late last year. Tom was described by many of you as being simply a good bugger, and his long and distinguished service to the Danny Burke RSA was and always will be highly respected, not just by RSA members, but by the Danny Burke community as a whole. I'd like to pass on my condolences to Tom's family at this time, as no doubt you think of him. For more than 100 years, New Zealanders have gathered together each Anzac Day to remember and honour those who have served our nation in time of war, those who didn't come home, and those who did, though wounded, maimed, and whose lives were forever changed by their service and what they went through. And it is fitting and proper that we also remember their families. Who could possibly imagine the heartache and the grief felt by Mr. and Mrs. Doria, for example, whose three sons' names are among all of those who are remembered on the Danny Burke War Memorial. Burley, aged 21, who died of sickness at Codford Hospital in England on the 30th of December 1916. Leonard Jack, the youngest, who was aged only 19, who was killed in action at Messines in Belgium on the 8th of June, 1917. The eldest son, Percy, who was aged 23, who died from gunshot wounds to the head and spine at St. Omer in France on 16th of October, 1917. Sacrifices on such a scale as that, many New Zealanders these days struggle to comprehend, but they happened. And we must never forget the price that was paid, what we owe, and to whom. This year we will also mark the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. And while there can be none of the customary dawn parades, tots of rum, a couple of pints with your mates over a breakfast, none of the things that we would normally associate with this very special day, we must still take the time to pause reflect and pay our respects to those who gave so much, not just 105 years ago on the Gallipoli Peninsula or during the six years of the Second World War, but for every conflict, every operation that we've been involved in before and since then. 
we open that. But it's actually a privilege to do so. A privilege earned for us and bequeathed to us by all those who paid the ultimate price in the service of our country. Today, our small band of Second World War veterans is amongst those most threatened by COVID-19. At this difficult time, we must do all that we can to support and protect our elderly citizens, our elderly veterans, who are most at risk. The comprehensive measures taken by New Zealand to combat the threat posed by COVID-19 have turned all of our lives upside down that we know. However, we only need to look back at the terrible influenza epidemic of 1918 to see what could have happened if the government had not acted so decisively. The 1918 pandemic coincided with the armistice that ended the First World War. Near my home here at Carterton, the Featherston military training camp was especially hard hit. The first cases were recorded in the camp late in October in 1918. And by Armistice Day, nearly two and a half thousand men had gone down sick. Within a few very short weeks, the pandemic had claimed 172 lives in the camp. In all, the 1918 influenza pandemic killed around 9,000 New Zealanders. Losses which came on top of the grievous casualties inflicted during the First World War. Today, as the world faces this ongoing challenge, we should look back and take strength from the courage and endurance shown by our forebears at Gallipoli in 1915, in the bloody carnage of Passchendaele, the Somme, Crete, El Alamein, and so many, many more battlefields and conflict zones since then. This Anzac Day, the absence of formal commemorations does not mean that we cannot mark this very special day by quietly reflecting on what we owe to those who have served and are serving our nation and our armed forces. As the Minister of Defence and for veterans, I am very proud of our Defence Force and especially thank all the women and men who are serving for their work during this current crisis. As always, they stand ready to do more, much more, to do what our armed forces personnel have always done, to step up for us all in the face of a threat to our national well-being and safety. So this Anzac Day, look after one another. Remember, reflect, commemorate and give thanks within your bubble. Stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you as soon as I'm able to get up to Danny Burke again. Kia kaha, ka momahara tonu tato, kia rato, lest we forget. Kia ora.
They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. I wish to thank all those who took part in making the Danny Vert 2020 Lockdown Anzac Service video, especially those who took a crash course in video technology. Without those providing content, there would have been no possibility of a service. Without the patriotic viewers, there would have been no need to have a service. Without honouring the fallen, the returned, and those still serving, there would be no point in having a service. So thank you all so very much.